As we enter the holidays, it can be a stressful time. Relax. God is in control. You say, yeah, but the turkey's frozen and the stuffing needs made and the pie's got to be baked and got all this stuff, got company coming, the house is a mess, uh, and on and on and on the list goes, and there's my husband sitting in that chair watching that TV. <laughs> Relax! God is in control. Bob, thank you for your testimony this morning. I got some words for you. I realize you can't read the mind of your management or whatever, but relax, and I know you are, God is in control. You say, yeah, but you don't know about, you know, that stressful job, and you don't know about the finances that I have, and this doctor's appointment I have to go to, and these tests that I have to take. Relax. God is in control. You say, yeah, but. Don't you just love that little word, but? Sometimes I don't. You know, we say one thing, but so often we act another way. What I'm telling you to now, I see your heads going up and down. Say, so, yeah, that's right, preacher. Yeah, relax. God's in control. But do we? We talk about faith and we say, yeah, I have faith. You talk about trust and you say, yeah, I have trust. But do we? You see, it's one thing to say it, it's another thing to, to really believe it and, and put it into practice. I want you to say something with me this morning. I want you to say, relax, God is in control. Now, I know that's a lot, but can you handle that? Are you awake? Okay, let's try it. Relax. God is in control. Now, some of you were with me on that. Some of you weren't. So let's try it again, okay? One more time. Relax. God is in control. Do you really believe that? In the book of Proverbs, chapter 3, verse 5, it says this. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not on your own understanding. To make it simple, relax. God is in control. He is in control. Verse 6 says, In all your ways acknowledge Him, and He will make your paths straight. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear the Lord. Shun evil. This will bring health to your body and nourishment to your bones. Honor the Lord with your wealth, with the first fruits of your crops, then your barns will be filled to overflowing, and your vats will brim over with new wine. Relax. God is in control. I guess you know what my message is about this morning, right? Relax. God is in control. I want to tell you something. You can't relax without trusting. You can't relax without trusting. Well, we know we ought to relax. That means we have to trust. What does it mean to trust? Well, I got out Dr. Webster this week. Dr. Webster says to trust means assured reliance. The character, the ability, the truth of someone or something. So we are to trust is to the assured reliance in the character, the ability, the strength, the truth of someone. And that someone is Jesus Christ. We have to put our trust, we have to put our reliance upon the character, the ability, and the strength of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what Proverbs is telling us. Why do we have such a hard time in trusting? The Bible tells us he owns a cattle on a thousand hills. Lynn says, and all the taters under the hills. So that's pretty good gospel, I guess. 
pretty good truth. He is the great physician. And if he can't fix it, it ain't broke. Think about that. He's able to handle anything that you face. Trust needs to become as easy as breathing. Give it to God. Step back and see what God can do. Trust Him. Rely on Him. Relax in Him. And He can take care of your life. Who do we trust in? Well, it says the Lord. Trust in the Lord. Whenever you see the word Lord capitalized, and you've heard me say this before, capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D in your Bible, it means, translated, the word Lord there means Jehovah. Okay? That's a word for capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. And here in the Bible, that word is capitalized. So that means, trust in Jehovah with all your heart. Well, we have to understand what the word Jehovah means. The word Jehovah means absolute self-existent. It literally means one who is what he is. He is above all, and there is no other. He is above all, and there is no other. Remember what God said to Moses when um, he wanted Moses to lead the children of, of Israel out of, uh, out of Egypt? Moses says to God, God, who should I tell them you are? I mean, back in those days, they had many gods. And they all had their own names. And Moses was saying, I just can't say that God said this. They're going to say, well, who is God? And so God responded to Moses. And what God said to Moses was, you tell them that I am that I am. Now we read that and we think, man, what does that mean? But what God was telling Moses was, you tell them it's Jehovah. And Jehovah means I am that I am. There is no other. He is above all gods. And there is no other. Who are we supposed to trust? We are to, supposed to trust in Jehovah, the God above all gods. And there is no one greater. There is no one that can do more miracles. There is no one more powerful. There is no one more that has more strength than Jehovah. He is that He is. And there is no other. God is amazing. Somebody sent me this email the other day about the Creator. And it, it kind of fit here, talking about, about God and Jehovah and the one who, who did it all and is above all. You know, God is concerned about the little, sometimes insignificant things, isn't He? I, I thought this was interesting. Let me share it with you. Did you ever think about eggs? I can't say I have. Uh, but let me give you an example. The eggs of a potato bug, like we're really concerned about that, but anyhow, uh, the eggs of a potato bug hatch in seven days. Those of a can canary in 14 days. Eggs of a barnyard hen in 21 days. The eggs of ducks and geese hatch in 28 days. Those of a mallard in 35 days. The eggs, the eggs of a parrot and the ostrich hatch in 42 days. Notice, they are all divisible by seven. The number of days in a week. That don't mean a whole lot to most of us. But it's just kind of interesting. God's wisdom is seen in the, in the making of an elephant. The four legs of this great beast all bend forward in the same direction. No other quadruped is so made. God planned that this animal would have a huge body, too large to live on two legs. For this reason, he gave the four fulcrums so that it can rise 
from the ground easily. The horse rises from the ground on its two front legs first. The cow rises from the ground with its two hind legs first. Now how wise the Lord is in all his works of creation. God's wisdom is revealed in his arrangement of sections and segments, as well as in the number of grains. Each watermelon, for example, has even numbers of stripes on the rind. Each orange has an even number of segments. Each ear of corn has an even number of rows. Each stalk of wheat has an even number of grains. Every bunch of bananas has on its lowest row an even number of bananas, and each row decreases by one, so that one row has an even number, and the next row has an odd number. Who would have thought? But God did. All grains are found in even numbers on the stalks, and the Lord specified thirtyfold, sixtyfold, and a hundredfold, all even numbers. It is said that God caused the flowers to bloom at certain specified times during the day. Linnaeus, the great botanist, once said that if he had a conservatory containing the right kinds of soil, moisture, and temperature, he could tell the time of day or night by the flowers that were open and those that were closed. How about that? The lives of each of us are ordered by the Lord in a beautiful way. He created these minds. He created these hearts. He created these lives. And He has a purpose for each and every one of us. We certainly need to find out what that purpose is. He is Jehovah. And there is no other. How much... How much do we trust? We must trust beyond our own understanding. Now that's kind of hard for most of us. How come we struggle so much to be obedient to the Word of God? You say, well, I don't understand it. Well, we're supposed to believe when we don't understand. Trust when we can't figure it out. Beyond our understanding, we are still to trust Him. God's ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts. He has His own way of doing things, and, and they are never consistent or the same. But when we trust Him, He takes care of the issues, doesn't He? Trust Him when you don't understand Him. Trust Him when you don't know how things are going to work out. Believe in Him. Have faith in Him. And He can work it out. You know, we, we like to sit down and we like to figure everything out. It, 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 it always puzzles me that, that we say we have faith. But when it comes right down to it, we always like to look at our bank accounts. Is that faith? Is that trusting God? Is that believing in Him? Faith. Now, I realize there's, there's a difference between faith and presumption. Okay? I don't want anybody going out of here and going buying a new car tomorrow morning, okay, and say, I've got the faith to do it. You don't do that. That's presumption. You take that money you were going to spend on that new car and you put it in here for a youth pastor. <laughs> no. Can you understand what I'm saying? But, but, but faith, you, you know, if we know that something is within the will of God and we don't know how it's going to work out and, and how it's going to happen, but we know that, hey, this is good and this is God's will, then believe, trust. Say, God, I'll do my part. You meet the needs. You take care of it. But we're going to believe you. It's amazing to see what God can do. Remember, 
Remember the children of Israel when they had to cross over the, the Jordan River. They say it was in flood stage. And they, they said to the, the, the leaders, the, the priests who had to go first, step into the water. The waters didn't divide yet, but they were supposed to step into it. Now can you imagine what they were thinking? It's at flood stage. The water is rushing. And God's saying, you need to step over. You need to get over on the other side. And what they do? They took that step of faith. And when they took the step of faith, the waters divided. Moses was struggling with this faith thing. And he's telling God, I, you know, I, I, and I'm paraphrasing this, you know. He's saying, I, I don't know about this. And, and finally God said, Moses, throw your rod on the ground. I love that story. And he throws it on the ground and immediately it turns into a snake. And then God said something interesting. He said, Moses, pick it up. <laughs> Moses, pick it up. I don't know about you, but I said, God, it's a snake. <laughs> like God didn't know. God, you want me to pick it up? Yeah, pick it up. Now, I don't know about you, but I'd have picked it up by the tail. But, but you know, it, it took faith. Moses reached down and he picked it up and it turned back into the rod. And God used that. That was the beginning of a journey for Moses. You know, and, and, and God, God used it. God told Moses, put that rod out at the Red Sea. And he did, and the waters divided, and they walked across on dry land. And then he said, Moses, put it back in. And he put it back in as the Egyptians were crossing, and the waters came back together and flooded the Egyptian army. Faith. Faith. The power, by the way, was not in the rod, but the power was in the faith. That's where the power is today. And Jesus said, you have not because you ask not. What's he saying? You don't have the faith to believe. God wants us to believe, to ask. How much do we trust him? As you turn your life over to God and relax in Him, He wants to use you. Think about that. God wants to use your life. God wants to use you. So as, as we relax and, and we put our faith and we put our trust in God, who is in control, God wants to use us. How does God want to use us? He wants to use us to reveal Himself through us. God wants to reveal Himself through you. But you know, if you're all tense, and if you can't relax, and if you're going to go around being all stressed out, and overwhelmed, and all of that stuff, how in the world can God use you? Relax in God, and let God work. God wants to use you. So you have to trust Him. You have to trust Him. Not only does God want to reveal Himself through you, but God wants us to relax, to fulfill enrichment in your life. He wants to bring fulfillment and enrichment in your life. If you cannot relax and trust God and trust that He is able to, to bring about the things that need to happen in your life, how in the world can your life be enriched and can you find fulfillment in life? You know, and it troubles me. Sometimes Christians are, are some of the most miserable people, it seems sometimes, that you come across. It ought not be that way. Relax in Jesus. Relax in God. Turn it to God. And trust in Him. And He can bring that fulfillment and that enrichment into your life. Don't allow the hindrances of life to rob you 
of your fulfillment. Thirdly, we need to turn it over to God. We need to relax in God. And when we do, He will help us to meet the needs of others. He will help us to meet the needs of others. Eight years ago, or eight-year-old Britain wanted to help with a Hurricane Katrina victims. So, she had a loose tooth. And Britain decided that she was going to give that tooth to the tooth fairy and the money that she got from it, she was going to send to the Red Cross to help out the, the victims of the Hurricane Katrina. The day came when the tooth fell out. and She looked at the tooth and she thought, no, I'm not going to send it. I want them to get it right away and the tooth fairy can give the money to them. So she took her tooth and she wrote a little note and she put it in an envelope and she sent it to the Red Cross explaining that she wanted her tooth to go to the tooth fairy so that the money then can be used for the Katrina victims. You know what happened? Word began to get out of what little Brittany had done, or Britain had done. An anonymous check for $500 was sent to the Red Cross in honor of Britain and her tooth. Now, I don't know about you, but last time I checked, the tooth fairy only gives about a dollar. And that's if, they're gener if she's generous that day or that night, okay? Um, tooth fairies kind of, they're, they're a little tight, you know. But I'll tell you what, when it's done for Jesus and it's done for God, amazing things can happen. You know, God wants to use you. God wants to shine His love through you. God wants to make us generous so that He could shine His love. You know, so you'd be obedient to Him. Relax, trust, and let God do His thing. As you and I relax in God, God wants to allow His ministry to go, to go forward. Through you, God wants to grow His ministry. God wants to grow His ministry. But you know, God wants to use our lives. There are people out there that you're going to be able to touch, to minister to, that I'll never be able to. But you can. But if you're all stressed out, and if you're not relaxing in God and turning things over to God and keeping faith in God, your life is not going to be the blessing it needs to be so that God can use you. It's hard for God to, to show His love through you when, when we're all stressed out and we're worried and, and uh, you know, we're, we're feeling so overwhelmed and so many things going on in our lives. But you know, it's different when we can just give it to God and say, God, th these things are too big. I can't handle these. I don't know what's going to happen. I don't know the outcome. But God, I'm, I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. Not that we're, we're not concerned about it, but God, I'm, I'm turning it over to you. I'm letting you do your thing. And you know, I, I found out that, that so often in life, that's exactly where God is. You see, when we try to do it in our own strength and our own ability, it seems like every time it just doesn't work. We can't, we can't make things happen. But I'll tell you what, when we give it to God, then God's able to work. He's able to do what, what God does best. Fix it. Take care of it. Do the miracle that needs to be done. But if you're still holding on to it and you haven't given it to God yet, He can't do it. You need to give it to God. Being happy doesn't mean everything is perfect. It means you've decided to see beyond the imperfections. And trust Him. Trust in God. Believe in God. Let me close with this story. A few years ago, a group of salesmen went uh, to a regional sales convention in Chicago. 
They uh, had gone to the meeting. Things had gone well, but they, the meeting went a little over time. They were running a little late, and they had to get to the airport, and they, they had to catch this flight. In the hurry and the bustle of trying to go through the airport and trying to reach that flight and all of that with all of their luggages and their suitcases and their briefcases, someone bumped into a table, kicked a leg out, and a girl had apples on the table that she was trying to peddle. And the apples fell off the table and they began to roll down the aisle or down the, the hallway there. And the salesman kept going. Didn't say sorry, didn't stop to help the girl. They just kept going. And all of a sudden, one of the salesmen stopped and said, look, guys, you go ahead. And he said, I'll, I'll catch the next flight out. But he said, I'm going to go back and I'm going to talk to that girl. I'm going to help her. He said, when you get back home, he said, call my wife, tell her I, I've took the next flight and I'll, I'll be home later on. They quickly went. He went back to the girl's stand. And he saw that the girl was all choked up and tears were streaking down her cheeks. And he said to the young lady, he said, I'm sorry we did that. And he said, let me, let me help you. He straightened up her, her table, fixed the leg, and he began to, to pick the, the apples up. And he noticed that some of them had gotten bruised and some of them had gotten stepped on. And as he began to, to pick them up, he put the bruised ones in another basket. Picked up the good ones and put them in another basket. He looked into the girl's eyes and he saw that the girl was blind. And it touched his heart. And he said, I'm really sorry. And he said, let me pay for those apples. And he, he handed her uh, cash for $40. And he said, Would this, will this take care of the, the apples? And she took the money and she thanked him. And as he began to leave, she called him back and she said, Mister, are you Jesus? And he paused for a moment and it kind of shocked him. And he said, no, I'm not Jesus. Why do you ask? And she said, because when my table collapsed and I knew the apples were rolling, she said, I prayed and I asked Jesus to help me. And you came back. And I thought maybe you were Jesus. And then she said this, if you're not Jesus, you must be his servant. You must be his servant. Listen to me, church. We should all be the servants of Jesus Christ. But if you can't relax and trust God, people aren't going to see Jesus in your life. Let's show people Jesus this Thanksgiving season. Let's be thankful. Let's relax. Because he is the God who is in control. Will you stand with me? Our Heavenly Father, as we bow our heads in closing this morning, I thank you that salvation is an awesome thing. Salvation changes our lives. Salvation makes us a new creature in Christ. I thank you for the spirit of the living God that can fill us, cleanse and empower us. And I thank you that we can be servants of the Lord Jesus Christ and we can show forth the love of Christ. But I also realize that we can't do that if we don't relax in you. If we don't put our faith and if we don't put our trust in you, we can't. Show people the love of Christ. And so, Lord, I, I pray that, that as we go through these holidays, that somehow you'll help us to remember the Scripture. Help us to realize that we need to trust in you beyond our un, own understanding. And in all our ways, acknowledge you. And you tell us that 
you'll direct our paths. And so, Father, I pray that you just be with us today. Help us to think about this truth. Help us to apply it to our hearts and help our lives to be changed for the good. For this we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed and God bless you.